Hello everybody and welcome back to the sanctuary. We got a new boat today so that means we're going to do a different kind of topic. Still going to be doing some A&P. I'm still Professor C guiding you through this mess. Let's talk about some joints today. Let's talk about specifically the classes of joints and get into the details of two of those types, the fibrous and cartilaginous joints. All right, so let's first start off with the three classes of articulations, and that, of course, is another word for joints, or you could use the word arthroses. Let me write that out real quick. Arthro. Arthur is the root for joint also. You might have heard of the term arthritis, the inflammation of a joint. So an arthrosis is another way of talking about these articulations. You can see them on the left here. I'm going to give you a couple extra terms with them. The first big group is called fibrous joints, and they are defined as being synarthrotic. And what that means is, if you hear about a synarthrotic joint, it means that it has no movement. And we're going to violate the rules a little bit in a little bit. But for now, fibrous joints are immovable joints. The next big class is at the bottom here called cartilaginous joints, and based on the name, it sounds like they are made from cartilage. Now, they are amphiarthrotic, meaning they have a little bit of flexibility. Not a lot, not none, but somewhere in between, they have a varying degree of flexibility. Now, in this talk, I'm going to specifically go over the three types of fibrous joints and the two types of cartilaginous joints. And what I will do with the synovial joints, which is the last class of articulation, I'll cover that in the following video. So there will be six types of synovial joints. Now, all the synovial joints are diarthrotic. And what that means is that they have many degrees of flexibility. They are what we call a freely movable or fully movable joint. So just to reiterate, fibrous joints are immovable, synarthrotic. Cartilaginous joints are sort of movable. They're amphiarthrotic, and synovial joints, all six types of them, are freely movable in many degrees of freedom. They are called diarthrotic joints. So, to talk about the three types of fibrous joints is actually fairly simple. Uh, the first type is a suture. It's one that we're well aware of if we watch my bone lectures. So, here we have, again, the coronal suture. We have the squamous suture here. We've got the lambdoid suture back here, and on and on. Any of these sutures are types of fibrous joints. And again, remember, we want these to be synarthrotic. We don't want these moving around. We don't want our skull bones shifting around like the plates in the earth when we talk about plate tectonics, right? So we want to keep those immovable. The second class of fibrous joints is called a syndesmosis. Syndesmosis, plural. You just turn this I to an E and it becomes syndesmoses. So most people know this term as ligament. So to keep it straight, ligament holds bone to bone. And we see three examples here of syndesmoses. The tibiofibular joint, both the proximal and the distal tibiofibular joint, and you can't really see them. I'll sketch them in here. You can see just a little black shading there. Those two are ligaments. They're holding one bone to another. Now, they will allow a tiny, tiny degree of flexibility, but pretty much we're going to call these synarthrotic. We see another one right here, this interosseous membrane. And again, I'm looking at a tibia. We've talked about that in prior videos. And here is its partner, fibula. So in between the tibia and the fibula is a, a, a membrane of connective tissue called an interosseous membrane. That is another example of a syndesmosis. So three examples of a syndesmosis joint between the tib and the fib. You can find a similar thing between the radius and the ulna. Okay, the final type of fibrous joint is called a gomphosis. Plural, again, just take this I and switch it to an E, and you have gomphoses. These are a very special type of ligament called a periodontal ligament, and based on the word peri, around, daunt, dent, have to do with the teeth. So if I could sketch in some periodontal ligaments, I would put them right here, holding that bone to the tooth root, just like this. So you should see gomphoses only found here surrounding the teeth periodontally. So there are three examples of fibrous joints. Cartilaginous joints, there are two types of these. And they can 
Both types can be seen on this one image here, so I'm just going to expand upon it. Now, one of the types of cartilaginous joints is called a symphysis. Again, to make it plural, just switch the I for an E and call them symphyses. But I see a symphysis right here in red, I'm circling, uh, the pubic symphysis, the one that we mentioned just a few lectures ago, where the two innominate bones of the pelvis connect, specifically where the two pubic bones connect in the center and midline of the body. So it is, if we can remember from another further back lecture, that it is made of fibrocartilage, a specific type of cartilage that's really good at shock absorption. So there is a symphysis, the pubic symphysis. Now, these here that I'm circling along the vertebral column, these intervertebral discs, they are also an example of symphysis joints. They are also made of fibrocartilage. So that's what we need to know. Symphysis joints are either the pubic symphysis or the intervertebral discs, and they are composed of fibrocartilage. The other type of cartilaginous joint is composed of hyaline cartilage, that glassy smooth cartilage. Again, if you want to see some details of this, go all the way back to our histology lectures and see the details of that. Now, the most common example of this, the one that you see in almost every textbook, uh, is the one that's shown here in the arrow. Now, we're on a long bone, and we see a line of cartilage here in between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, sort of. It's definitely in the head of the bone. And the term for this is, I'll write it here, epiphyseal. That's the epiphyseal line. And so you could call that epiphyseal plate if it's growing. So technically, I guess that would be the epiphyseal plate. But that epiphyseal structure there, line or plate, is an example of a synchondrosis. And it will seal up at some point and become a syntosis, which is the sealed cartilaginous joint. But it is uh, left cartilaginous as the bone expands lengthwise. Now, the other example of a synchondrosis joint, I can draw an arrow up to here and show just the remnant, right, the, just the bottom there of the costal cartilages. Let me spell that here. Remember, it's not coastal, like it's on the, the seacoast, right? It's costal. Uh, so the costal cartilages, and I'll just put them there, are also made of hyaline cartilage, and they connect some of the ribs, at least the lower pairs of the ribs, uh, indirectly to the sternum, and they connect the upper pairs of the ribs directly to the sternum. So we have costal cartilage and epiphyseal line slash plate acting as synchondroses. All right, if you enjoyed that one, stick around for the next one, which is about the six types of synovial joints. Check out some other videos if you want to learn more. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.